In this video, we're going to cover key things that you need to know about cancer of the penis. Now, before we start the video, it's important to know that penile cancer is a rare cancer that mostly affects the skin of the penis and the foreskin, which is the skin covering the head of the penis. Now, it's most common in men over 50. Now, before we get into the main section of this video, I want to preface things by stating that if you do have a problem with your penis, it is much more likely statistically to be due to a cause other than cancer, such as infection or inflammation. But in this video, we're going to cover potential symptoms of penis cancer so that you know when to go see your doctor, as well as causes and finally treatment options. So let's start off the video by taking a look at some potential symptoms and signs of penile cancer. Well, most cancers of the penis affect the skin covering the penis, which is the foreskin or the head or tip known as the glands of the penis. Now, the most common symptoms are a growth or a sore that doesn't heal within four weeks, a rash of the penis, bleeding from the penis or under the foreskin, a smelly discharge, thickening of the skin of the penis or foreskin that makes it difficult to pull back the foreskin. This is a condition known as phimosis, a change in the color of the skin of your penis or foreskin. Now, other symptoms of penile cancer can include a lump in the groin, feeling excessively tired, stomach pain that doesn't go away, or losing weight without trying to. Now, it's important to note that many of these symptoms can be caused by things other than cancer, but nonetheless, it's important to see your doctor if you do have any of them, because on the rare chance that if it is penile cancer, the sooner that it's detected, the better the treatment outlooks are. It would also be worth seeing your doctor if you notice any changes to how your penis looks, discharge or bleeding from your penis, or if you've been treating your symptoms at home for a few weeks and it hasn't helped. So what might happen when you go see your doctor? Well, they'll likely ask you some questions like what your symptoms are, when they started, or if you've used anything to treat them, and they'll examine your penis and ask you to have a blood test. Now, depending on what they find, they might refer you to see a specialist in hospital for more tests. So now that we've discussed potential symptoms and what happens when you go see your doctor, well, what are the causes and risk factors for developing penile cancer? Well, in terms of causes, roughly half of all penile cancers are caused by certain types of a virus called human papillomavirus, which you might have heard being referred to as HPV. Now, there are different types of HPV and some affect the genital area and the ones responsible for penile cancer are typically HPV 16 and 18. Now, you can get HPV from any skin-to-skin -skin contact around the genital area, so vaginal, anal, or oral sex, or sharing of sex toys, but again, it's very important to note that most people affected by HPV will not get penile cancer. In terms of other risk factors, well, penile cancer is most common in men over 50, but it can affect anyone regardless of age. And the risk is also higher if you smoke, you've got problems pulling back your foreskin, which is the condition I mentioned earlier called phimosis, or you've had treatment for psoriasis with medicines called Sorolens and an ultraviolet light source called Puva treatment, or if you've got a weakened immune system because of a condition like HIV. So now that we've discussed some of the risk factors and potential causes, let's move on and briefly discuss treatments. Well, in terms of treatment for penis cancer, well, it's going to vary based on the stage and type of cancer, its location, whether it's spread, as well as the patient's age and overall health. Early stage penile cancer is often treatable with non-surgical methods such as chemotherapy creams, things like 5-fluorouracil, laser therapy and cryotherapy, which freezes the cancer. Now, surgical options for early cancer might include removing the affected area of the penis or circumcision. Now, for more advanced penile cancer, treatment might involve surgery to remove the cancer and surrounding tissue, the head of the penis, part or all of the penis, and sometimes lymph nodes to reduce the risk of recurrence. In terms of recovery from these surgeries, well, it can be extensive, potentially affecting the penis's appearance and function, but it's also best to discuss this with your particular surgeon before you go down this route. Reconstructive surgery might be an option if significant removal is necessary. Additionally, chemotherapy might be used alone or in conjunction with radiotherapy, so chemoradiotherapy either before surgery to shrink the cancer or after surgery to eliminate remaining cancer cells or if the cancer has spread to other body parts. Radiotherapy which uses high energy radiation can be an alternative to surgery or it can be used post-surgery if there's a risk of remaining cancer cells or to treat lymph nodes in the pelvis if there's a high likelihood of recurrence. 
Finally, what are my top five tips for reducing your risk of penile cancer? Well, firstly, protect yourself from getting HPV by getting the HPV vaccination if you can. Secondly, use condoms when having any kind of sex to lower your chances of getting HPV in the first place. Thirdly, try stop smoking if you smoke. Fourthly, think about having a circumcision if you've got thermosis, which is the tight foreskin, which makes it hard to pull back and clean the penis. And fifthly, make sure that you regularly and thoroughly clean your penis, pull back the foreskin and wash under it. That brings us to the end of the video. Remember to check out the description box for more useful resources on this topic. Leave any questions in the comments section and please check out the other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching and until next time, bye.